Hi, my name is John Lewis. I'm the director of a nonprofit called Renew Richmond. We're here for the second year of Richmond's March Against Monsanto, here to tell Monsanto and big agribusiness that we will not stand for their unconstitutional practices, that we will demand to know what's in our food, and we will demand labeling, mandatory labeling on our food. Uh, Monsanto and big agribusiness, DuPont, Syngenta, have taken it upon themselves to decide what goes in our food and what we have a right to know. Unfortunately, we're not based on price points. We're not based on a dollar amount. It's our constitutional right to understand what's in our food and decide what goes in our food. And we have a right, universal right, to healthy and nutritious food. Yeah. I <laughs> You got a picture of me. But I'm wondering if he did. Here, let's let him get one of your Agent Orange cards. I want to see your orange ribbon down a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Hi, I'm Shannon Kirchhoff. I'm the organizer of Richmond's March Against Monsanto. Here at the Capitol, it's May 24th going on around the world. In Richmond here, we are fighting for food freedom. We want to um, get the state to think about labeling our food. That's a, a long-term but short-term goal as well. But um, mainly, we're here to raise awareness about um, Monsanto, the corruption that they are part of, and um, trying to get good food to good people. <laughs> are you doing still photos? I got a little bit. Is that better? Okay. So, I just want to tell you why I organized this. Um, I organized this because I care about the future. I believe we all have that in common Hold here. It it is, okay, I'm new at this. I'm sorry. The PA system is weird. Um, is that better? Yes. <laughs> okay. Alright. Well, we're all happy to be here, I, I hope. Um, we have a collective letter going around that I would really love to get your opinions on that I want to present to the governor. I want um, to get a real consensus of why everyone's here. And I know we all have a lot in common and maybe we all have different insights that we can all share and you know make a well-rounded campaign to the governor. And, <laughs> well, today um, we have some, a lot of, activists here that are very interested in this cause and I do have some people that want to speak but also um, that if I haven't talked to you yet and you have something that you want to share with everyone here a testimonial or you know experience that really drives home the, the root cause that Monsanto is evil <laughs> that's why we're all here um, please just come up and uh, you can play with this bullhorn but uh, here's uh, Theodora to share some stuff with us Okay, I'm not sure how well I can multitask and hold and talk and, and you know, do all this at one time. Um, as she said, thank you all so much for coming out here today. I'm sure that many of you all, thank you, Lee. See, Lee is going to... Okay, thank you, Lee. Lee is awesome. Don't we love Lee? Let's give her a hand. Thank you, Lee. Um, I know that many of us are already familiar with, with um, what GMOs are, genetically modified organisms, and they are, have been in our food supply for about the last 15 years, definitely the last 10 years. And as we look at the rates of chronic illness, um, disease, heart disease, obesity, diabetes, and just um, autoimmune disorders, increase in allergies, we have to look at what is it that is in our environment or that we are consuming that is causing this. And while the big biotech companies will do all they can in their power to prevent studies from coming to the surface that show the um, health risks associated with consuming GMOs, the bottom line is that there are no studies that show that GMOs are safe. And so what can we as consumers do? Think about whether your legislators are going to pass legislation uh, quickly enough or not. You can make your voices heard with your dollars. So think of each dollar that you spend as a vote against GMOs. And so uh, to keep yourself safe, obviously the best thing to do is consume as few GMOs as possible. And so the top 
GMO crops in the U.S. include soy. 94% of the soy grown in the U.S. is GMO. So as best as you can avoid soy products, do that or search for organic. Cotton, 90% of the cotton grown in the U.S. Now we don't necessarily eat cotton, but we are using cotton and other things. Canola, 90% of the canola crops are genetically modified. Sugar beets, I know that sugar beets are used in condiments, a variety of things to sweeten um, them. 95% of the sugar beets in the U.S. are GMO. Corn, 88% of corn crops are GMO. More than 50% of Hawaiian papaya is GMO. And then zucchini and yellow squash, there are over 24,000 acres that are genetically modified. This is information that you can find from the Institute for Responsible Technology, and that website is responsibletechnology.org. Um, some of the things you can do, clearly eat fewer processed foods. A lot of the processed foods are going to have corn byproducts in them. Reduce the amount of high fructose corn syrup you consume. Grow your own veggies from heirloom seeds or work with John. Where's John here? They have community gardens throughout. Um, join a farmer's co-op or get to know your local farmer and learn what cultivation techniques they use. If you can't afford organic or you don't have access to organic, you can still ask the local farmers if they're doing conventional or if they have GMO seed stock. It's important that you know this before you start consuming things. Um, I know that John is also very concerned that lower income families and inner city people do not necessarily have access to these healthier foods. They have the pro uh, processed foods, can packaged things. And so I know he's doing a lot of work to help increase awareness and educate people in the community about this. So vote with your dollars. Try to eat as many whole foods as possible, and um, that's all I'm going to say right now. I know Erica has some comments she'd like to make, but again, thank you all so much for coming out today. Hello, thanks for uh, everybody coming out. Good to see a lot of faces and meet people that I've met on Facebook but I hadn't met in person yet. Um, I've been involved in the movement and a volunteer for Center for Food Safety uh, for about 20 years. And the movement, we can finally uh, say that we are officially millions. We have it, were millions years ago, but now we are thanks to um, public uh, input and the internet has helped us a lot. Um, I just wanted to pipe in real quick. I've been handing out some of these cards on these no nukes. Uh, in particular because uh, North Anna um, Dominion wants to build a third proposed unit there in the seismic zone. Um, we are finding that we have multiple um, previously unknown faults, so we think it's ridiculous that we would want to put a third reactor at North Anna in a seismic zone. Uh, lessons learned from uh, Fukushima, which is an ongoing nuclear disaster that we're not hearing a lot about in the news. Um, it's a disaster, and it's, it, who knows when it will end. Um, obviously, with Chernobyl, we have an idea. So we don't want this kind of event to take place in Virginia. All the nuclear waste that we create, we are going to be stuck with. And so we really need to rethink this. We need to give Dominion a call and let our legislators know that we want clean, renewable energy. We need to go with solar, wind, tidal, geothermal, and yes, we can. We need to move away from this dangerous technology that gives our future generations waste they'll have to watch over for about 100,000 years. So uh, keep, the, keep the fight on for GMOs, you know, for natural food and for organic food. Um, we're going to continue um, with the legislators and with our new governor um, to uh, really get him to push for us to become a non-GMO uh, agricultural zone. That's what I'd like to see here in Virginia. So thank you guys.